Okay, Sunday morning in the kingdom, and I'm feeling a little bit better. Yes, I can move my head a bit, and I still can't eat peanuts. Yes, I can't eat peanuts because of my jaw. It still hurts, but we survived the night. Also, too, it's Sunday, so make sure you got your vacuum. Yes, make sure you clean it. All right. So we woke up this morning. It's a little chilly. Plus 12 degrees, but feels like plus 12. Yes, nice warm temperatures with a slight breeze. All right, and then on the yo-yo scale, plus 54, but feels like plus 54. And there's a slight rain. Yes, isn't that unreal that I just about had a near-death experience getting struck by lightning on a sidewards, sidewards or horizontal zap or whatever? Oh, when you hear that zap, it's crystal clear and you know what's going to happen next. And yet I'm standing on the deck of my house and I get zapped. And meanwhile, Dick is flying around in the clouds where this lightning is made. Oh, wait, he needs to, to drag a ground cable and then he would get zapped. Unfrickin' real. And even at my funeral, he'll probably buzz my funeral. Zoom, a nice low or whatever. All right, so today we're planning a light, easy day. The staff will come over later this afternoon to help with the gantry. Yes, because I can't sit still because I'll seize up. Yes, you got to keep moving, keep working, and wiggle your head. Yeah. All right. And I thank you guys for the comments on getting better. But what are the odds of that? All right. Let's scroll quickly here. There's no sunshine except for a slight breeze. Yes. We didn't do much yesterday. We just played around to try to keep active. And also, too, right over here. Okay, right there is fox poop. How convenient. A fox saves it all day so he can come over and have a poop in front of the dogs. Yes, just to pay back or to piss them off. Just poop in front of their view. Yes, that's what they were barking at last night. I couldn't believe it. But that's what we have cameras for. We just look at the cameras and see what's going on. Yes, to record my demise or the great lightning strike. All right, so we just about made a full rotation. It's being Sunday. We're having bacon and eggs. The staff got some good eggs there. I mean, bacon the other day. We're treating ourselves. Yes, the only treat we get at the end of the world is delicious bacon. Because we're Canadian. Yes. All right, so today's going to be an easy day. All right, let's get to work. Here comes the boss. Okay, out in the shop after morning coffee. Yes, and we're going to be working on the gantry overhead crane thing for trailer 9. Because we need to get it in there before we shove any more else in that trailer. Alright, so yesterday to keep exercised and keep motivated, I cleaned out a lot of parts out of this shop here. And put it in the perspective trailers. Yes, where they belong so we can find them later. Okay, so yesterday we did everything twice. Yes, twice. Because I had no brain cells. I couldn't think. I couldn't concentrate. But the main thing is I kept going. I said if I sat in the house and boo-hooed about what happened, uh, that doesn't get you anywhere. So I've had these bearings for probably close to 40 years. And they're an oddball size. You couldn't even find a shaft to fit in there. So I found a shaft and then Booger welded it up, grounded, made it a tight fit. So that worked out good. So this will be the overhead slide mechanism or the trolley. We don't have a trolley for an I-beam or an H-beam or anything like that. So we had to make one. Yes. So we made it. So we did everything twice. As you can see, nothing symmetrical. So the grinding <laughs> made it look good. And this is the pipe that will slide in here. So it was kind of tricky. Thought was required. But I put nylon tie straps in here to get the space. So I knew that, that the bearings will be holding all the weight. And this is the size of pipe we'll have on the top of the gantry. And the reason we're going for pipe is we have lots of it. And this is a drill steel pipe. So it's a heavy duty quality and there's no seam. So we don't have to. Working with this is a pipe and it has a seam in it. That's spooky because that's where it's going to crack and break out. But guess what? The seam is now the uh, bearing rollers. So that was our little fun project yesterday. And then we found the wheels here. We've had for 30 some years or more. We oiled them up so the project today is to get this wheels lubed up and trimmed down to size because we don't need all this booger plates. We want small little dimensions so we can actually get, uh, how would you say, this gantry being small because we have to walk past it. Also too, for working on three or four cat motors in Trader 9, we also have how many IH motors in the other Trader, Trader 4 I think it is, yes, Trader 4. So we, it's not a waste of time, this gantry. Plus with it being on wheels and in a van trailer with a hardwood floor, that'll work a lot better than having a 
gantry in the shop with the dirt floor. Yes, look at the dirt floor. Yes. So this works out well because in the shop we use the mini hoe or reach in with the fork from the loader or the boom from the green toy. All right, let's get these wheels ready because the staff will be here after lunch. Okay, lunchtime in the kingdom and it's still cool and icky. Yes, it's probably going to snow. Yes, we had one hot day already this summer, so that's probably it. So we got the wheels over here cleaned up and surprisingly after 30 years being in the scrap pile and then what, 15 years in the... 15, uh, 15 of those years in the storage trader being called reusable. All right, so we got those done. We have the gantry side frame here kind of figured out. And then the staff will be here this afternoon to help hold the pipe. So we'll have the mini hoe out for a good time. So we've got them all notched. Yes, I notched them out and did the grinding. So we're ready to go here. So let's get some, uh, let's go have some bacon and eggs. And then we're good for, then we're ready for production after lunch. Oh, these lips. Yes, my jaw is still sore. I'm having trouble for now. I still can't eat peanuts. Oh, well. Okay, two o'clock in the kingdom. We're getting set up here. Yes, we're getting set up. So this is 74 inches of the top pipe and we made sure to put this in here because it's kind of important if we forget to mount it There's no way we could actually get it in later on. So it works pretty good. Maybe kind of sort of <laughs> seems to be one wheel only turning But oh well once you get a load on it, it'll bend into place and flex All right starting to spit because we have the jig set up to do the welds on the legs the supports and everything so that's what we're hoping we're going to try and do the welds here to get a temporary set up and then stand it up and then do the official welds and we're getting everything lined up here for a flat bottom but you're working with degrees and angles and philosophies kind of doesn't work out when nothing's straight because we live in the land of dr seuss oh my but we're having fun on a sunday yes that's what we can think and say Sunday morning in Whoville, it's just after 10 a.m. and I'm rolling out of bed. I just let the dogs out and as you can see, it is pretty windy out here right now. So that means no sand flies or bugs, which is good. The sun is shining, but there is some clouds out, so maybe we'll get a bit of rain. This is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 14 degrees Celsius, which is 57 degrees Fahrenheit. We even how the feels like on the bottom. Now it's time to head inside, make breakfast, and then at 1 p.m. I have to go to the kingdom. Almost 1 p.m. and I just got the quad out. Now I'll head on over to the kingdom and see what my dad's up to. I just had a simple chicken pot pie and some rice for lunch. I wasn't really hungry and it was easy to cook. So let's head on over and see what my dad's up to. Just after 1 p.m. and I made it to the kingdom. Now I'll head on down to the shop and see what my dad's up to. Pretty windy here right now so that keeps the sand flies away and it's actually chilly. I have my jacket on. Had to get the mini out so I could come over to the pipe rack and grab this pipe that had the two X's on here and then I'll bring it over to the shop and we can put everything together. I'm pretty sure we are building a motor mount or sling, whatever you want to call it. That way we can move the motors around in the van trailer. Almost 1.30 while my dad gets everything set up I have to grab some plywood and then go into the tank shed and move all the stuff around so when we do move the tank everything doesn't fall off the shelves plus we need the wood so we can put it into trailer number 9 on those brackets that we put up the other day. My dad's just going to weld it together and then we can stand it up and put it all into place over in the tank shed now and I have to take everything off these wooden shelves here that way we can get the boards out and they can go over into van trailer number nine plus when we move this tank shed we don't want all this stuff on the shelves to fall off so I might as well just take it off now that way we're not cleaning it up later 2 p.m. and I just got everything off the shelves. We thought these were really long 2x6s, but it looks like they are just core boxes, so I can unscrew them and drag them over to trailer number 9. Then I'll head on back up to the shop and see what my dad's up to. Just after 2 p.m. and I'm back up at the shop, I was able to get all the core boxes and wood into trailer 9 so my dad can tinker away and make a couple shelves. Now we are going to stand this pipe up and replace it where that black one is. That way we can make the sling.
almost 3 p.m. We finally got it put together. It took us a couple tries. We were able to get it figured out. It is nice and level. I just had to take a step back so I could see how it looked this way. Then I'll go stand by the mini and take a look that way. The only thing left to do is put the wheels on. We won't know if it's flat completely until it goes in the van trailer and we start using it because the ground around here isn't exactly flat. looks pretty straight to me, but nothing in our lives is straight, so this might be as good as it gets. And then those are the wheels that will be going on on either corner here. We even measured it out and they are the exact same. So hopefully it's level and it rolls nicely. 3 p.m. and it's almost coffee time. We are just putting the wheels on right now. I have to eyeball it so my dad can get them straight. We just put the back ones on. Now we are putting the steering ones on the front and they have to be right on the dot or else the thing won't steer and that won't be good. Once we get the wheels on, then we can lift it off of the table here and onto the ground. Just after 3 p.m. and I'm officially done in the kingdom, we were able to get it off the table and flipped over so now my dad can continue welding on it. I'll grab my dog treats and head on back into Whoville and then I'll do the weather close to 5 or so. Okay, just about 5 o'clock and we got this thing flipped over. Yes, it's got wheels, it rolls around on the hard pack ground. Yes, so we've got it done. I did most of the welds uphand because that's my way of choice or whatever. So we got it working out pretty good. I think we're going to have enough strength going crossways this way without having to put braces in because we did the staggered... Uh, uh i don't know what you call it stagger weld okay it's a little harder to do but it's easier in the end for when you're cutting your pieces because everything fits we're very pleased how it turned out and we got some gaps in here that we had to fill we just used a feeder rod and it worked out good so i had to re-grease it because it got a little warm and the grease kind of flowed out but that's okay we have lots of grease we have lots of time let's get this thing standing upright and see what it looks like Okay, I had to hustle my ass because I had the gantry over there. I had it all oiled up, lubed up and everything and it was starting to rain. Yes, so I had to hustle. And the thing is, is I welded it when it was spitting rain and everything because I wanted to get it done. So I had to rush and I had to remove the D7 4T motor out. Okay, so I lifted it out with the loader. See the loader tracks right there? All right. So then I had to line up the pallets here. One pallet, two pallets, three pallets in a straight line and look what came in here beautifully it was well orchestrated i couldn't set the knee phone up on the tripod because it was spitting rain but we got it it's in where it's dry it looks good let's give it a test and it's the right height as long as i don't shrink okay so i can reach up to work the controls i was going to go a little higher because i thought we'd need height down in here for lifting then I got thinking, how the hell am I going to reach up? Because the older you get, the shorter you get. So let's give it a try here. So that works pretty good. Oh, hand and eye coordination, Les Nessman. Can't do it. All right, there we go. So there, that's perfect. Okay. So in what, Saturday I built that with a hell of a headache and ringing in the ears. I had to do it twice. And then today I whipped up these pieces here. So this turned out very well, very pleased. Now my dad would make a list and he'd price out all the parts, analyze the cost analysis to build it and everything. And then he'd give up because according to his list, he couldn't afford it. I just went ahead and did it. I had what I had. I didn't have a trolley, so I made one. That's the way we do it. Yes, get it done. So if you got projects at home, 
No more boohooing. Don't make a list. Just do it. Cash in the empty beer cans and buy a case and get going. Very pleased with this here. It would have been nice to have rear wheel steering too or rear steering, but these ones are solid. And of course, it has no brakes, but that's like everything else in the kingdom. We'll figure out brakes later. The staff was able to give us some core boxes or boards here so we can figure that out tomorrow whatever how to lay them out to get them flat and get some of these parts off the pallet so we can begin assembly or see what we got for cranks because we got three four motors sitting here and we need two so let's hopefully and pray to the gods of the parts are correct that we can actually get two more cats up and going all right let's go check on the flags 5 p.m. and this is the temperature we're sitting at right now. It's 16 degrees Celsius, which is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. We even have the feels like on the bottom. It's been on and off raining all day and pretty cold out. I had my jacket on for most of it. The sun is trying to peek out through the clouds, but I'm sure we'll get some more rain. Now it's time to head inside. The dog's are already out. Make supper and end my day. Okay, we might be short video for, video feed for this video to make it the full 20 minutes. So everybody gets a good nap, so we'll have something from the past. Well, it's a sad day in the kingdom. I just cancelled the insurance and plates for this truck. The 86 Dodge, known as the head hanger, uh, served me well. It's too far gone, it's too far rusted, the turn signals don't work, the brake lights don't work, and it's not worth fixing anymore. Because we're having troubles keeping the doors closed for some reason. I have to park in certain spots and everything like that to get the door to close or to stay closed. And the best part about it is the seatbelt thing's hanging down there. So if we're in an accident, it'd be kind of a jerk before it goes right through the floor. But it served me well, so we're going to strip it today and repurpose the parts onto other things. We're going to have nothing but Chevys running in the kingdom because that's what I was born and raised on. Well, it only took a couple hours to get the truck stripped. Well, like Michael Bolton says in the Captain Jack Sparrow, let's get to the good stuff. All right, so we strip the parts off the motor we need or want or we can recycle. We have the rad over here. We have the exhaust system that's kind of not that healthy, but in case I need a muffler to put on something. And we have all the good parts over here we can go through and get. And the last and final thing we'll take off is the tires. And as you can see, even the back bumper fell off with the plasma cutter. All right, I was just about finished. Okay, it's official. The staff's now taking the 86 Dodge head hanger down to the scrap part of the yard so it can go south to be recycled. All right, it's almost 20 years of fun. Talk to you later. Well, it was a busy day today in the kingdom, so it's the end of the day video. The boss has gone home because he's such an asshole. But we pumped out the pit here, so now we can start servicing the trucks and the vehicles in the kingdom. It was half full of water, just like in the Beverly Hillbillies, their seaman pond. Okay, the staff and I got out the muskeg buggy, which will have the 46 Chevy cab mounted on it. They had to cut the bottom off the cab because it's kind of wrecked anyway, so it works out good going on the muskeg buggy. But this is the truck that started it all back in 1990, and we bought it, and we were driving it, and we made it into the welding truck. And it kind of looks good in the lineup of trucks here. Okay, when we took the cab off the 46 Chevy welding truck, the welding truck became the welding sleigh. All because the frame had been lengthened by Farmer Brown back in the day, so it wouldn't pass the safety back in 1996. So you can see the farmer had done a nice job of boxing in the frame, and it never broke from 1951 on. But the rules of the government, so it became the welding sleigh. But as you can see, I've taken a lot of parts off this uh, chassis or frame here for the other trucks to keep going. Okay, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out, but those are fresh tire tracks by the screaming Ford with the tire chains on. We had to get the truck started and move it so we could get the fence panels out to expand the dog pens for the dogs. Because they're getting a little bigger and they're getting more aggressive because that's what they are, they're guard dogs. But we didn't get a video of the screaming Ford running, that's to come. Okay, as you can see, we did some changes in the dog pens. We cut off the old water box to the shop. We got electrical wires that have to be changed, but a few other things. But the main thing was is to get the fence panels up and around so we have air movement for them. But as you can see, they're aggressive, but they're, they're rescue dogs, and that's what they are to do. And they sure do like shredding and having fun and everything like that. But they'll get used to the new pen, but that's part of life in the Great White North. All right, we'll talk to you later. 
Okay, it's nice and chilly out here. I got my bush jacket on, just like the Bob and Doug McKenzie. If you know who Bob and Doug McKenzie are, you had a good childhood. All right, there we go. There's the clouds coming in. It's probably going to start spitting rain because I got to walk the house dogs. Look at the flags. They're all tangled up. All right, let's go drink some beer and make a video, and we'll talk to you later.